Hi everyone. Um, the next book I have to review is uh, a history book. It's actually a book of medieval history, um, and it's called uh, The First European Revolution from 970, circa 970 to 1215 by R.I. Moore. Um, I've always had a, an interest in medieval history, and uh, most of what you can find at least in uh, you know popular bookstores, is sort of the um, uh, the the sort of romantic side of medieval history, the knights and the the knights templars and all of that sort of romantic stuff. But um, it, it's nice when you can come across a book like this uh, that actually um, is a little bit more rigorous and and uh, can can uncover some details that you might not otherwise have known. Uh, for some reason, it's been almost second nature to think, uh, at least since the time of Jacob Burkhart, the, uh, the uh, historian of the 19th century who wrote the book uh, The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy, um, for quite a while that the Renaissance has been this sort of single-handedly bringing about an end to the Dark Ages, which sort of loomed for a millennium after the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, there have been occasional attempts at revising this historical conclusion, most notably probably by Charles Homer Haskins in his book The uh, Renaissance of the Twelfth Century, which offers up a lot of details on really complex changes in science and technology and church life and agriculture which occurred during that time. In fact, some historians claim that the Renaissance to which Haskins refers in that book is actually only the third in a series of medieval rebirths. Uh, the first being the Carolingian Renaissance and the second being the Ottonian Renaissance, uh, both of which were very intellectually and artistically important in their own day. R.I. Moore's book, uh, The First European Revolution, picks up Haskins's revisionist themes and broadens his timeline a bit. Uh, as you can tell from the subtitle, we're talking about almost 250 years of history from 970 to 1215. And it stretches it from the end of the, tw the, end of the 10th century to the beginning of the 13th uh, in order to be able to discuss a wider range of cultural phenomena. Uh, during this time, Europe experienced, as Moore says, a profound uh, profound changes in economic and, and political organization of the countryside amounting to a permanent transformation in the division of labor, social relations, and the distribution of power and wealth. And uh, I mean, as you can tell just from that one part of his sentence, I mean, he's covering a lot of territory in this book. And it's only, you know, not very long, 200 pages, not including the end notes. Uh, it's a lot of territory to delve into in in this sh in a really short book, and I think the book does suffer from this sort of excessive ambition. Uh, at the end of, at the end of the tenth century, to get to the actual content of the book, uh, both the powerful uh, in Latin you'd say the potentes, and uh, the powerless, uh, the paupares, uh, which we get the word paupers from, but it doesn't really mean poor; it means powerless. Uh, we're both responsible for cereal production, okay? so, which accounts for almost all of the agriculture. So you have both these sort of wealthy, more landed uh, people and the poor, uh, or I, I should say the powerless, um, responsible for creating food. At the end of the time period, however, at the beginning of the 13th and maybe even by the end of the 12th centuries, you have almost all food being produced by a group of people dependent on others for their survival. Uh, serfs, in other words, uh, who became a class in themselves of enslaved workers tied to the land by predictable cycles of grain growing. Uh, Georges Duby, the French medievalist, uh, outlines three orders that form the backbone of medieval society. He calls them uh, the oratores, those who pray, 
the Bellatores, those who fight, and the Laboratores, or those who work. And at the beginning of Moore's time period, the first, uh, the Oratores, uh, those who pray, that would be the, 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 uh, the monks, essentially. Anyone who was uh, cloistered or, or affiliated with the church, they defended the, the third class, the laboratories, the laborers, against the excesses of the swollen warrior classes in the time immediately after Charlemagne, which had exerted their power by the imposition of monogamy, uh, primogeniture, and patrilineage. Uh, but in time, the church shifted its support from the workers to the aristocratic warrior class, partly because it was promised the land granted to it uh, would never be requisitioned uh, by the uh, secular uh, knights. Uh, this was one of the major ways in which we see a Roman church at the turn of the millennium that's still very loosely organized and weak uh, turn into the powerhouse that it would become in the high middle ages. Uh, there are a lot of other really important cultural and social shifts which are discussed in the book that I won't go into here. Uh, suffice it to say that the book establishes a lot of history that's sometimes left unsaid uh, coming up through the beginning of the Middle Ages and fills in a lot of the blanks concerning how the church grew to be so, so powerful over a relatively short period of time. And as I already said, I wish that Moore would have narrowed his scope a little bit and focused on one or two of the major changes instead of all of the ones that he mentions. Uh, covering so much ground leaves you with an, a less even presentation of the impacts of these changes and it can feel like he's trying to stuff too much information into a short space which gives the book a little bit of a textbook feel instead of a engaging history feel. Re regarding the style, uh, at least one other reviewer of this book uh, referred to the prose as lapidary, uh, which is something I would probably have to take issue with. Uh, I found the little I found the writing a little bit dry myself, or a lot dry, to be honest. Um, but it is one of the few affordable books aimed at a non-academic audience, even though it is rigorous. Um, that covers this material. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, you don't find many books on sort of revisionist uh, medieval history that sort of reconfigures the way you think about it. So for that reason, the fact that it's accessible for non-scholars, uh, I appreciate it for that. Um, Moore has apparently written other books on heresy in medieval Europe, which um, look interesting too, so if heresy is your bag, uh, definitely check those out. Um, the First European Revolution, circa 970 to 1215, by R.I. Moore.